I'm Dave McGrail. I'm Chris Martin. And we're getting down to the brass tacks and hard facts of standpipe hose valve outlets. We're going to review the four common types of standpipe valve outlets, some design and operational considerations. The first type is a standard angle valve. This type of valve would be found in uppermost floors, and it's rated for PSI up to 300. Fire code requirements for pressure and flow for standpipe hose valve outlets is driven by NFPA 14. NFPA 14 states that the top two outlets or most remote outlets in a building must flow 500 GPM at 65 PSI for buildings built prior to 1993. Buildings built post-1993, the requirement is 100 PSI residual pressure for the topmost outlets or most remote outlets flowing 500 GPM. Firefighters need to keep in mind the actual flow and outlet pressure throughout the building can vary and we don't know for sure what it's going to be unless a specific hose valve outlet has been flow tested. The next type of valve we're going to review is a pressure restricting valve. The design of this type of valve is a device on the exterior that limits how far the valve can actually open. The pressure restricting valves complicate things just slightly for firefighters because there is an external device that does not allow firefighters to open this fully. That's how it restricts the pressure. This particular pressure restricting device can actually be broken off. However, operationally, it's recommended not to strike this because you could damage the hose valve outlet. It's better to use the finesse of a Allen wrench and loosen the set screws, which will drop this restricting device out, turning this into a standard hose valve outlet. The third type of valve is a pressure reducing valve. This is a standard pressure reducing valve that's non-adjustable. You're gonna find these in the mid or lower floors and they're rated for up to 400 PSI. This type of valve is set at the factory, delivered to the construction site, and installed by the installer, hopefully in the right stairwell or floor where this valve has to go. Operationally, these valves are quite scary for firefighters because as the name states, they're a preset at the factory. There's no ability to adjust these on the fire ground. Telltale signs for firefighters of the factory preset valve is this ring toward the top of the valve body. It's also important to note that if firefighters aren't sure, they can take the cap off and look inside the valve. When you see the smooth stem, you have some sort of internal operating pressure reducing valves. It's a smooth stem so that the PRV can float and operate properly, adjusting pressure. Versus on a standard hose valve outlet, you have a threaded stem, indicating that you have a standard valve outlet, but once again, you have to look on the outside to see if there's any external restricting devices. The last type of valve is a field adjustable pressure reducing valve. This type of valve would be delivered to the construction site and a pressure set at the time of installation by the installer. This is one of the most user friendly of those pressure reducing valves because firefighters can use a valve adjustment rod like this one, 3 8 inch diameter to insert into the top rotating barrel of this valve and rotating one direction or the other to increase or decrease pressure as necessary. These are four different types of valves that firefighters might encounter inside of a high rise building or standpipe equipped building. In fact, you could encounter all four different types in the same building. It's important to be engaged and understand these and all types of hose valve outlets for firefighter operational safety and success.